here's where I think this is going in, in the bigger picture conversation that should be had and I think will be had throughout the game. The stays in the room culture has, ex- has existed for a long, long time. And there are, there are a lot of different scenarios where I still think it's important that that applies. Right. You know, if, if there's an issue between a couple of players because they don't get along or something, stays in the room. We have a meeting about why we're not playing well enough, stays in the room. But the stays in the room motto has, has supplied a shield for a lot of people, coaches and players. Yep. Because it's like, well, I can do or say whatever I want in the room because it stays in the room. Right, sacred. And I don't know if that's what Bill Peters was thinking. In reality, if he's, if he's spitting off like this, that's just who he is, and he probably has said it many different times in many different situations. Correct. But that's where I think this is ultimately going, is the whole what happens in the room stays in the room. If it's, if it's pushing a boundary that it shouldn't, well, it's, it it's, may not stay in the room. It's, but he, and I'm fine with that because that's a, that's a different thing. You're right. Like a little spat or something that happens in yeah, injury that's and different, stuff. Jamie. We've all dealt with that. And you played for Daryl Sutter and you said yeah. there was a lot of instances where, you know, stuff happens where it wouldn't happen in a normal workplace, right? Right. But being like a, you talk to people today and you hear things like one of the worst people I've ever been right. around. There's like a, you hear stuff like that about Bill Peters. So I, 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 we, right. we met him, we saw him at the Hockey Hall of Fame luncheon a couple of years ago. Seemed like a really nice guy, but yeah. when people are saying that, well, that, that, that's when you got a problem. I've always said, and the, this is the one thing that I, it's a good lesson for everyone. And regardless of sport, business, anything, you're starting to see the difference between public perception and private perception. Sometimes they line up perfectly. You know, that person is a great person. You know, this, you know, I, I would, I'm biased, but a guy like Jerome McGinley has a great public perception, but his private perception is amazing as well, the way he conducts himself. But sometimes they don't line up. And it seems to me, you know, I, I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. The, the Mike Babcock situation, they're, they don't line up, potentially. Well, and, based, and on what, what based on what stories we're are coming out and here. And it's the same thing. You're starting to see some stuff filter out with Billy Peters' behavior that doesn't really line up with, you know, what, what we see on the surface. And that's, you know, to your point, going back to it, I don't mind the changing of the guard uh, of, you know, pulling the curtain back on certain things because these are societal things. These are, these are things where I think the world has changed and we have to understand that and respect that and, and, and really live by the, what, what is out there. But like an injury, and, and, and that's where I think there's still going to be a line, is just some of the things that should be, come back to the words, common sense. Yeah, and, you know, this is the last couple of years we've witnessed, you know, those that abuse power are being outed. Yes. And eventually they're falling in, in drastic fashion. And, you know, the sports world, locker rooms dressing rooms there's always just been a different standard and a different set of rules Mm -hmm. compared to your standard cubicle or standard work site and it's just been accepted and we've heard coaches say say this for a long time they always have believed they've got to screw with the players before the players screw with them yeah and brian in my time playing in the nhl i've never had a coach like i've had a coach pull me in his office and say you're playing awful right now you suck right now but nothing like, n- no one's ever punched me in the head or like n- nothing yeah. above the normal stuff. Like it's just, yeah, I, I think you there's... suck or you, you got to play better or you're going to be scratched. Like, but nothing crazy where it, I still it would think... never go out of the room. Cause I would call my dad immediately and say, guy punched me in the head well, or I, whatever. It, it I, never got to a point where it was this. No, but it's more about, I think the word respect. There's a difference between an old school person who wants to press but- buttons and try and get the most out of them. But I, you know, but Jamie, I'm, Pat Quinn or Paul Maurice or Peter Laviolette, like it right. would be you're going in the press box. Yeah. Not punching in the head. I know. Or, but what I'm saying is it, even today's world, if you swear at somebody, people take offense. I, I, it, in that instance, I've been sworn at by a coach. But, I, you know, I didn't. Man. I, I didn't I was, want to run for an HR room. What we, I wanted to do. We I, swear at each other. I dude. understand that. What I'm saying is I'm trying to, to lay out, like, 
there's a respect factor, and those lines were crossed. And that's why guys are getting called to the carpet, because those are things that that don't fly in any room, whether it's in a dressing room, in an office, in society. That's the that's the being a I'm tough right. coach still makes sense and will still make sense. But knowing where to draw the line has always been a part of that program. Correct. And. A lot of this, again, I, we can speak to hockey because we all played it, and this right. is the sport we're talking about. I don't think it's foreign in a, a, other sports either. You know, I think football probably deals with this oh, yeah. in some ways, basketball in some ways, baseball. I mean, every sport, it's a, it's a locker room culture. But in reality, you start, you witness it at such a young age. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I can remember playing for coaches seven, eight, nine years old swearing at us. Yeah, which is, I mean, that's... And that's a, not right, that's but it's... common sense. That's ridiculous. Though. But it just, yeah. it happened. You're right. And, and I'm sure it happened because that coach was like, well, I'm watching an NHL coach right. and that's what he does, Tough so that's love. what I'm going to do. And it's, right. if I let these kids get away with, you know, not practicing properly, then the parents are going to say, what are you doing? The parents factor in at that oh, level as sure. well, you allowing about, certain things to happen. You hear about lunatic parents, especially in this market, GTA... How many lunatic parents are out there all the time living through their nine-year-old thinking their nine-year-old is the next Mitch Marner or but, the next But it's Austin not even Matthews. it's not even that. It's it's relying on the coach to get the kid going. Right. And a lot of times it's the coach that's going to hold the power. That's going to that's going to be the one that can get your kid to the next spot. And even right. at the NHL level, it's the coach that's why, you know, some people are wondering, well, why didn't this come up before? Why didn't these guys say something? Because their livelihood's on the line. Uh, right. uh, these, are, these are fringe NHL players who are like, if I say something here, am I just going to disappear? Am I not going to play? Right. Um, is anyone going to believe me?